Not essentially for wind, there may be wind on this line, but uh, in Minnesota, the Public Utilities Commission required uh, Excel to provide uh, at least uh, a certain small percentage of uh, wind uh, and renewable energy on the Brookings line, and they immediately, within three months, uh, petitioned the Public Utilities Commission to have that requirement removed. Um, and uh, recently, the a big uh, wind uh, turbine uh, system up by St. Cloud, Minnesota, uh, was unable to get, get started uh, and didn't even make application because essentially they, their power was too expensive and it's not going to be probably built. Um, so the, the question is, uh, the, the most subsidies, many of the subsidies go to coal and not very much to wind and therefore it's not, it's not cost effective, but that's because of the subsidy system. And then there's the issue of economic dispatch. It's a really important phrase. The federal regulations require for utilities to take power that's the cheapest first. And if coal is the cheapest, that's what's going to go on its line. And uh, the subsidies for wind are decreasing, and therefore there's a potential that we have much more dirty coal and no guarantee of any renewable energy. Next. So there's a need question. This is the Wisconsin Public Utilities Commission uh, final strategic energy assessment. The information that we have, incidentally, is from the online sources, from newspapers, magazines that we read. It's all public information. We're not giving you any information here that, we, that you couldn't find on, on the web yourself. Um, Wisconsin has a comfortable plan to reserve margin, advocacy, and reliability of expected energy and robots. So there's a plan to reserve margin forecast to 2016 above 15%. This is not our information. This is the Urban Public Utilities Commission of Wisconsin. Thanks. Furthermore, in the recently released November draft environmental impact statement, one of the quotes says, it's not clear that there will be sufficient population growth in the cross minority area to justify the projected increase to demand the electricity presented in the application. So it's really not about the power that we need. It's about the power that they want to transmit from one end of their region to the other. Next. Another study that uh, came out in 2009 it showed that there was a 6.4% drop in, in, in electricity usage, not just in residential, but in commercial, agricultural, and industrial. This is an, an important statute that is uh, in Wisconsin, and the, uh, one of our uh, members over in uh, Farmington Township actually dug this out and, and found that uh, the transmission projects that are approved by the PSC are required to have uh, uh, costs and proportion of their benefits to satisfy reasonable needs for energy and to not be overbuilt in excess of future energy needs. So the question becomes, when the PSC decides this, are they going to decide what's good for the people of Wisconsin? Or are they going to decide what's good for the utilities and for the entire upper Midwest region? And the people who are going to make this decision, we think it's important, it is the PSC. There are three people. They were appointed by the governor. And two of those appointees have been appointed by um, Governor Walker. So essentially, uh, Mr. Walker, his appointees will make the decision on whether this power line goes through or not. Go <laughs> um, there is a better way. We can have power, we can have plenty of power, but we can have it through renewable energy, locally produced. It creates jobs. Um, central station energy um, versus distributed, distributed generation. I mean, we've always been used to having energy that comes from large power plants, coal-fired power plants, nuclear plants, big wind plants. We're suggesting, and many other places in the country are doing this, is they're producing their energy locally, and they're making using smart grid technology to do that. And it's also a huge driver uh, of jobs and economy. And um, can you go back to that one? I didn't see the top part of that. It's really important to reason the efficiency and, and uh, conservation of the the cheapest electricity you can buy is the one that you don't use if you, if you conserve electricity. Um, go ahead. Some of the other solutions, um, there's been a recent study by the um, Institute for Local Self-Reliance called Energy Self-Reliance States. We have a cover uh, and, and a website for that. In, two, in May 2010, 60% of the states, including Wisconsin, meet all their internal energy needs from renewable energy generated within their borders. Uh, a recent uh, XO Energy project out in Boulder, Colorado was wildly successful when um, the smart grid technology was used in, in that community. So what is smart grid technology? Just a little brief thing on this. It's, it's, it's where you use electricity at a time and a place when it's cheapest. So you, get the, you, you know how much your electricity costs at any time of the day or the night. You can use your electricity with a smart uh, smart grid technology that uh, will, will save you money. It's more reliable, it's more secure, economic, 
more efficient, it's more environmentally friendly, and it's frankly uh, much safer. Next. So what's the answer? CapEx is the wrong answer, we believe. It's an old method. We spend this kind of money on a project that's going to last 50 years, 60 years. We won't be able to spend that money on renewable energy conservation, on the new technologies, and on building a system that's going to create um, jobs for our communities. It's not about wind. We need to protect the river that bluffs in our farmland, and we don't really need to build these lines. Uh, next. What can we do? Well, again, there's a number of things that we would encourage you to think about. Get, get informed. There's some websites there, Powerline Truth, the Institute for Local self Reliance, No CapEx 2020. Uh, some suggestions that we have, contact your elected officials, encourage them to make public statements, encourage them to get a comment on the record. The PSC docket is there, 5 CD 136. Everyone can comment. We encourage uh, elected officials to do the same. You can write a letter to the editor for your local paper. We encourage the Madison paper as well. Pass an opposing resolution like many towns and communities have and get your friends and neighbors to sign a petition. Petitions are over there at the table if you want to sign one tonight opposing the power line. And uh, put your name there on an update sheet if you want, just to uh, keep informed uh, through our community uh, information sessions that we have. Thanks. I think that's it. Thank you very much.